questions? Until I know the 757 is one of your primary areas, you guys land the top two guys according to the 24-7 sports composite for the first time since 2005. What's changed in that area that's allowing you guys to have the type of success that you've had on the recruiting trail? I think early on when we first stepped foot on campus, we made a commitment um, to stand to our word, and that's what we were going to do. Whether it was coaches', coaches clinics, uh, in the area, uh, 757, Richmond, uh, whether it was us spending extra time in those high schools with high school coaches, uh, it was a conservative effort uh, to get a chance to build relationships with those guys. And fortunately enough, I had a lot of relationships with those guys already walking into this place. Um, but it's just something that Coach Pry has preached, and uh, he's a man of his word, and we want to make sure we back him on that. And what did you see in Keelan Adams and – Chance Wiggins that made those guys kind of their priorities at receiver um, for this class. Keelan is special, man. Um, you don't you don't get that much that much attention and, and offers and success uh, without being a very talented person. He's humble. He's extremely hardworking. Uh, if you just go back and look at his reception to, to touchdown ratio, it's through the roof. Uh, the kids, he has a great family, high character. Um, he's been starting since his freshman year. The kid is three-time All-State, won over 40 games. Like, that's hard to go unnoticed. Um, he's a special player. Uh, what I love about Wiggins is he's, he's very similar in a lot of aspects to Quan Felton, just as far as his character, just as far as his, his intensity, uh, just as far as his demeanor, just as far as his work. Um, he's passionate. Uh, he plays with an edge. And, like, the competitor in him, man, is, is just – something that stood out to me from the very beginning. And I, I, I believe, and I have this date right, I was hired early January. And I think the second week I was here, uh, maybe a little bit slightly earlier than that, he was on campus for Virginia Day. And since then, uh, we've been in contact with him. And uh, it's been a long process for both of those guys. I mean, those guys, they, they garnered a lot of attention throughout the season. Um, that's when relationships came into play. Uh, when you're in those guys' schools and you're in those guys' homes and you're around their parents and you get them here for junior days and you get them here for practices, it makes it harder for those guys to make other decisions to go elsewhere other than staying home. When you found out the news that Ali and Quan and Jalen and Steven were all coming back this year, I I'm sure you probably weren't surprised, but what was, what was your reaction and, and – how excited are you to work with these guys for an extra year? Thrilled, uh, thrilled. I think um, those were ongoing conversations, man, throughout the season, obviously. Um, Ali's the type of competitor where you, can't, you couldn't tell him he wasn't going to play in the bowl game. You couldn't tell him he wasn't going to come back this season and you know, be a major factor on why we win games. So when it all kind of worked out, uh, when all those guys were going to come back, even more so when they were going to come back and announce together, um, I think that showed the team and that showed Hokie Nation, like, those guys are for real. Uh, the culture that they've driven in that room, uh, the competitive spirit, the togetherness, uh, they're leaders, man. They're leaders of the team, they're leaders of the receivers, they're leaders of the offense, and uh, they're truly special, man. Those young guys rally behind them, and they got a, you know, a really good group to learn from. Uh, Noah Jenkins, Highland Springs guy. Uh, Coach Pry mentioned that you wanted him for your wide receiver room, and he's going to end up going over playing a little bit defense. Uh, when, when you first recruited him, what do you remember about his ability to play both sides of the ball, and how excited are you for Coach Jones and, and Coach Prelude to get him on that side of the ball? I'm very excited for Coach Jones because now he can leave all my receivers alone because uh, that's an ongoing discussion between us and practice and recruiting. Uh, but, no, seriously, Noah is uh, – He's a special athlete, man. He's big, he's strong, he's talented. Um, and that's, that's the type of guys we want to recruit. We want to recruit guys that can play on both sides of the ball. Um, it's, it's just another dynamic. I love to see it in an offense. I love guys. And the same thing with Chance Wiggins. I'm, I'm watching Chance in, you know, in, in the playoffs run a guy down from 40 yards on defense and play every single snap. You want to talk about dedication. You want to talk about team first. Like Those are all the qualities that make a really good program. Montel, I guess we've seen your 
full, two full recruiting classes, being able to rebuild this wide receiver room, not through the transfer portal, but recruiting. And how much of an emphasis have you placed on not only recruiting in state with a host of those guys being from the state, but also plucking guys from the footprint who can help the in the receiving core? Uh, I want competitors. You know, I want guys who are not going to shy away from competition. I want guys who are going to come here and be program changers. I want guys who have high character. Um, and it just so happens the guys, the transfer guys we recruited, Quan Feld and Ali Jennings, are from the state. Uh, the two signees are from the state of Virginia. Um, like that's an opportunity for us to get a chance to see them. I can hop in my car. I can be down the road in three, four hours. I can see them at, at the drop of a dime on any time we can go out recruiting. Uh, and that's the benefit from taking advantage of our footprint and really being visible in these schools and getting a chance to know their teammates, their counselors, their teachers, their coaches, and they're going to be open and honest with us and vice versa. They get an opportunity to come here and spend time with us. David asked you about the four returners already, but what does that do for the entire wide receiver room in terms of developing these young guys? You'll have five tech freshmen, three red shirt, two true, plus uh, two sophomores. What does that do in terms of their their development to have another year of learning behind those four that announced they were returning? Priceless. Uh, it's priceless. Uh, they get an opportunity to learn from four four guys who all four will have an opportunity to keep playing this game for as long as they as long as they want. Um, you know, I had a pretty <clears throat> unique conversation with Aiden Green uh, towards the end of the season and you know we always have our wrap up meetings and that's one thing we addressed. Uh, I'm honest with those guys. I'm transparent with those guys. Uh, we have an open line of communication. And he said, Coach, I want those guys to come back. I want them to come back. It's going to make me better. It's going to make us better. And it's going to help us have a better program. So that kind of spearheaded us uh, into the offseason. I mean, obviously into recruiting. And uh, it's been tremendous, man. If I tell you, look at some of these stats on Tyler Mason, 6,000 yards, 120 touchdowns, 13.1 yards per carry. What, what kind of uh, running back uh, is he and what does he bring to the table? Special, man. Like you said, at 13 yards a carry, I don't think I've been around anybody at any level, uh, including rec league uh, back in the day that can average 13 yards every time they touch the ball. Uh, the kid is week in and week out was the most dominant on the field. Uh, you, you can't downgrade anybody for who they play against or where they grow up or uh, the, the conference or the level. The kid, is a, he's a football player. Uh, he's a competitor, and he showed up, and he won games, and he led his team every single week. Uh, in signing Davy Belfort, uh, it seems like you have quarterbacks of all shapes and sizes yeah. in this program right now. Is there a common thread between these guys that uh, you see that this is what you're looking for in recruiting? I think more, more so than anything, I think um, Coach Bowen and Coach Chris have identified guys with the right intangibles. Um, obviously, uh, arm strength and arm talent going to play a big part in that. And those guys win, man. Like, you, you get quarterbacks and – any position that come from winning programs, uh, kids who are used to doing things the right way, uh, high character kids and families. Um, I mean, you guys heard Davi speak today, like who wouldn't want to go play, play with that guy? Like the leadership qualities that he's shown in this short time has been tremendous. Fontel, not to continue to belabor the point of the returning quartet of receivers, but what is the value of, of basically the entire receiving core returning for Kyron Drones and his continued development and success? Uh, consistency in the offseason. Um, those guys get a chance. They know right now who's the quarterback going to be next year. Uh, so anytime that Kyron wants to go throw, anytime they want to sit down and watch tape, anytime, anytime those guys have ideas, uh, it just gives you a little bit of a head start, you know, on spring, on offseason workouts. Uh, because they know who the guy is, and, and they're going to continue to build on that. They have a great relationship already, uh, those four that's coming back and the young guys. And I just think something that <clears throat> Kyron does a great job. Kyron reaches out to those guys, hey, let's go throw. Hey, let's go watch some tape. Hey, let's go find ways to get better, and they're all willing and ready to do it. Let's go one each on Zoom, please. Few on Zoom, starting with uh, Colby, please. Coach, how invaluable is it for – all those returners coming back and then having guys like Davi and Keelan and Chance had the opportunity to, to run on scout team against the first team defense and just get reps that uh, young on scout team. I mean, I think that's an extreme selling point. We talk about guys like Chance Fitzgerald and 
uh, Xavier Bradshaw and Takai Heath, who had an opportunity uh, day in and day out to work against Dorian Strong, to work against Monsoor Delane, to work against Derek Canteen. Like, those guys are getting better. Those guys are getting better in practice. Uh, those guys are getting better uh, on the weekends. Just the competitive level in practice has went through the roof over the last two seasons. And you can't do anything but just smile and, you know, talk a little bit of junk to the, to the DBs when we do one-on-ones. And, you know, that's for me, like, the most exciting part of it, uh, getting a chance to see those guys compete. Tim Sullivan, then David Teal, please. At Afontel, you talk a lot, and, and Brent talks a lot about wanting guys who are the captains of their high school teams or who have who've played for really successful high school teams. But um, looking especially at your two receivers that, that you guys have signed, they're hugely productive at the high school level. Obviously, uh, Brody's the all-time leader in receiving yards in the state. Um, Chance might be there if he, if he didn't have another four-star receiver lining up on the other side of the line from him. What does it mean to you to have these guys that, that not only have the kind of the intangible stuff, but, but the production to back it up? What you get is you get guys who've, who've dealt with adversity and found ways to work through it. Um, you know, everything hasn't been great for Brody throughout his career. Uh, and I'm sure you can say the same thing for Chance, but those guys have responded. They've dealt with adversity uh, and they've always found a way to, to come out on top. And like I said, uh, when you're highly successful and you have the records that Brody has and you have the production that Chance has, it increases the competitive level when they, they get here on campus day one. Uh, if you don't think Aiden Green and Chance Fister and Takai Heath are excited to get them in the room, but also excited to go compete against them, then you're crazy. Uh, but that's going to make us all better. That's going to make me a better coach. Uh, that's going to make our DBs better. Uh, and it's going to make our offense better. Until you know Ali probably longer and better than anyone. He gets those two touchdowns in the opener and then gets hurt. How has he navigated the subsequent months and where is he in his rehab? Um, he, he's been, he's a unique kid, unique kid man. He's, uh, he's always very positive. He's always really encouraging. I mean, obviously uh, it was rough for him initially when it, when it happened, but he's always in smiles. I think the moment he got back around the guys, he was able to do it. He was in weights. He was in the meetings. He was finding a way to encourage. He was on the sideline. He's waving a towel. Uh, so I, I've been really proud of him and just, you know, his will to, to bounce back and to be a positive guy around uh, day in and day out. Uh, he started to practice with us here a little bit last week, uh, running some routes, catching some passes. So uh, I'm very thrilled on where he is and his rehab. Um, and we'll get him back here sooner rather than later. Thank you, guys.